Hello, welcome to part three of Sierra Chart Potential Trading Issues and Solutions. In today's video, we will be looking at a few things. The first thing we're going to start off with is talking about using the good till canceled time in force for attached orders. This is important for traders that intend to enter a position and hold it over the course of many days or until the next trading session. And you want to make sure that your attached orders are never canceled. When you use the good till canceled time in force, your orders will be canceled when the futures contract you're trading expires. So if it is not expiring anytime soon, those orders will remain on the exchange. So the way this is done is when you configure your trade window or your bracket order configuration. So I will start off by opening up the trade window. In this case, it is already opened, but I will open it by going to trade and then open trade window for chart to open it up. I will start by configuring the parent order. And by the way, it doesn't matter how you set up your orders. You can be doing them programmatically. The principle is that you want to be using the good till canceled time and force for your attached orders. So let's say you've configured a parent order in this case, and it's a limit order and you want to submit um, a buy order just as an example here. So let's say your parent order quantity is two contracts. Now you want to configure your attached orders. So we will go to the targets tab in the trade window. And now when we select one of our attached orders at the very bottom of this window where it says TIF, that's where we have to change this to good till canceled. And notice if you change it on your target, it will also apply to the stop order on the other side because these are an OCO pair of orders. When, when the target is filled, the stop will be canceled and vice versa. That's how OCO orders work and they're very safe. Now it's also important to ensure that the quantities of your attached orders match the quantity of your primary order or your parent order. If they do not match, then at the top of the trade window, this will not be lighting up in green here. So if you were to go in and change the quantity of the attached order to one, you can see in this case, it's red. The reason for that, like I said, is because it is not matching the quantity of the parent order. So they need to always be matching. And you can do different methods where you have, say, multiple targets and multiple stops, and they will match with the parent order quantity. It doesn't necessarily matter how many targets and stops you've configured. They just have to be matching with the parent order quantity. So always make sure it is lit up in green here at the top to ensure that it is matching the quantities. So once you've set up your trade window configuration, you do want to save it into a trade window configuration that you can call up at any time. So go back over to the main tab of the trade window and then select the M for the menu that will show all the settings in the trade window. And then we'll select save configuration. And this is how we um, save this. So give it a name right here under the file name and I'll just name it something like test1.twconfig, and then you save it. And then at the very top here, um, it'll give you a dropdown by clicking here at the top of the trade window. And then you can go ahead and select your newly saved trade window configuration here. You can also set your trade window configurations, the ones that you've saved. You can set them to control bar buttons, so you can select them like for example, up here on my control bar, these four buttons are actually trade window configurations. And I can switch between them on the fly like that. So this is advantageous if you have multiple bracket order configurations that you want to switch between, okay? So that's how you set the good till canceled time and force for your attached orders. And again, very important if you're planning to hold trades overnight or over the course of many days. For more information about the trade window and trade window configurations, you can find the documentation here at sierrachart.com. So we'll select the table of contents to get brought to this page, then select trading, then select basic trading in the trade window. And then here is the page that contains all the information about the trade window, using and changing between different trade window and attached orders configurations. That's sort of what we were talking about here. All right, let's continue. So overall, Teton has the safest order handling system of any other system that Sierra Chart supports. This is because it has been developed for trading with Sierra Chart and to improve upon the many issues that have been found with the other trading services over time. 
If you are ever confused or unsure about order entry issues or the status of orders or positions or your trading account, do not do anything repetitively. The first thing to do would be to disconnect to the data feed and reconnect. The way that's done is file and then disconnect. Now in this case, I'm using the market replay feature so the chart will still continue to work. I'll select file connect to data feed to reconnect. Doing this will cause the orders, positions, and account list to be up to date for your trading service. You can use one of these windows, the trade orders window, trade positions window, or trade account monitor to view your positions or orders in your account. If you have any orders or positions that you're not sure of, you will definitely see them here. You should cancel those working orders, close positions, and if you're unable to, then contact your broker. Now that's why it's important when you are first learning Sierra Chart that you're not sitting there trading with real money. You wanna get used to using the software first before performing any form of live trading. Here is an issue that may occur with some other trading services, but you will not experience this problem using the Teton order routing service. In the case of a rejected market order when flattening a position, you need to enable the option explained here. We're on the documentation for basic trading and the trade window. I'll scroll down until we find this page right here, rejected market order when using flatten or reverse because of position limit exceeded. So there's a setting you need to enable here in global settings, general trade settings, hold market order until pending cancel orders are confirmed. So we'll go to global settings, general trade settings, and then we'll find that setting. Hold market order until pending cancel orders are confirmed. If you're using the Teton service, just keep this off. If you ever encounter missing order fills in your trading account, you can retrieve them with a new setting that has been added here. And you can find the new setting under global settings, Sierra chart server settings, and it is max historical order fills days to download. So this will be the number of days back that you want to download your historical order fills for in your account in the case that you're missing them or they've been lost somehow. What's good is if you use the Teton service, it supports multiple years worth of data. So this is a dramatic improvement compared to other trading services. Some of them only allow you to download one day worth of order fill data. Okay, so in regards to the missing order fills and restoring missing order fills to the trade activity log, I'm gonna show you how to do this now in Sierra chart. So we'll first show the documentation. We'll go over to documentation table of contents and then find the documentation for the trade activity log and then scroll down until you see missing order fills from trade activity log. Now there's going to be instructions here for how to automatically insert missing order fills. Now this is not going to work for every single trading service. Now it will work with the Teton order routing service because it has full order history available since the beginning of when you started using the service. Some other services only offer it for um, a shorter amount of time. So you may not be able to go ahead and retrieve all that data. However, if you were trading from Sierra chart um, at the time that you placed those orders, then it is likely that you will be able to restore those order fills using the backup files in the backups subfolder, which is in the Sierra chart installation folder. So that's a different method, but now we'll show the method of reconnecting to the data feed after you've deleted um, order fills from your trade activity log. So these instructions go over how to automatically insert a missing order fill, and I'll show you how to do that. You can also manually insert them using the edit insert trade activity entry command. So I'll show you how to do this in Sierra chart now. So we'll start off by opening up the trade activity log here for our chart by selecting trade, trade activity log. And then the first thing to know is that if you are using sub instances, like if you're trading from a sub instance, you will need to do these steps in the primary instance first and then repeat the same steps in the sub instance. So in this case, I'm just using a primary instance, so I only need to do the steps one time. So I've opened the trade activity log. Now we're going to configure the trade activity log to show the order fills that we want to delete and then restore from the server. So I will select the trade activity tab at the top. Now we need to filter out by order fills and also make sure you select your account that you wanna restore the order fills for. 
Um, I'm not going to click here because it will show some account numbers, but you do need to set this to your account that you're restoring the order fills to. Next, you need to make sure you select all notes here. Um, in the case that you may have filtered this by a particular note, you're not going to be displaying all of your order fills. So make sure you set this back to all notes. And then if you're missing order fills only for a particular symbol, you could set this to a particular symbol. But in this case, we'll just leave it set to all symbols, non-simulated. The next thing is set the date range to display to the time just before your missing order fills. And also this date range here is relative to the time zone you have set Sierra chart to. Now, if you're using the Teton service, you can go ahead and delete order fills for a live trading account. And when you reconnect to the trading server, they will automatically be re-downloaded. So even if you delete one by accident, um, there's no risk that it will go missing. So to select multiple trade entries, you can click on one item and then hold the shift key and then click on the item lower down. And you can see in this case, we've selected all these items. Now, in order to delete them, we can select edit, delete trade activity entry. Once you've deleted those entries and you wanna re-download them, you can select file, reconnect, and it will reconnect to the data feed and re-download any missing order fills for your trading service. This menu in the trade activity log under edit, insert trade activity entry, will allow you to go in and edit or even add in additional trade entries into your account. You can edit the existing trade entries and all the fields that appear there. It is supported to control how the average price is calculated in Sierra chart. There's a few different methods that are supported. I'll just show you how to get to this documentation first. So it's under table of contents trading and then trading information windows. And then we'll scroll down until we find how average price for positions is calculated and used. And under this documentation, you can find all the information about the different methods for average price calculation in Sierra chart. The last thing is, if you ever run into any issues with your daily profit and loss value being incorrect, there are some steps you can take to troubleshoot this and fix this. Now, the reason it can be incorrect is because it is calculated on the client side in Sierra chart using order fills, and it is also very much affected by various settings. You may have changed one of those settings, so we'll go under the trading documentation here, then under help with daily profit and loss value, and then simplified steps to solve incorrect daily profit and loss. And you can find a few steps here that will help you to solve an issue you might be having with an incorrect daily profit and loss value. So follow these steps if you are having that issue. All right, that will conclude this video on Sierra chart potential trading issues and solutions. Thank you for watching.